Matthew is the first gospel in our New Testament. But Matthew is not the first gospel written. That distinction goes to Mark. But Matthew has his unique characteristics. One of them, of course, is the great Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And when we read the Sermon on the Mount, we begin to feel somewhat uncomfortable because we can't reach those ideals. In fact, the Sermon on the Mount is characteristics of the ideal characteristic of God's people. And when we realize that we fall far short of those characteristics, that ideal, then it reminds us again that we need a Savior. And it drives us again by faith to the Savior's feet. One section in chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, Jesus says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand that it might give light unto the world. You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So if there's a title to this, I'm calling it Light Your World. Light Your World, or a subtitle, Let Others See Jesus in You. The big battleship was plowing through the dark waters off the North Carolina coast. And far, far off, there was the flicker on the horizon of a little light. And as they got closer and closer and the light became brighter and brighter, the captain of the ship sent this message. Give way. There was no response from the light. Closer, closer, brighter, brighter. The captain sends another message. Give way now. This time a message came from the light. Cannot give way. And that upset the, the captain of that ship. And he said, what rank are you? And a message came from the light. Seaman, second class. Well, that infuriated that captain of the ship who really was an admiral. He says, this is a United States Navy battleship. I am an admiral. Give way now. And the message came from the light. I am a seaman second class. And this is a lighthouse. I cannot give way. We cannot give way. We are God's lighthouse. In a world that grows darker and darker, it seems, every single day. So let your light so shine. Now, the you is plural. It's us. The light is singular. May I share a couple of suggestions as to how to light your world or to let others see Jesus in you? Light your world even in the midst of your troubles. Light your world, even in the midst of your troubles. And trouble, it seems to be some people's middle name. The Bible says to expect it. James, the Lord's brother, says to rejoice in them. I don't know. That's hard to do. But Jesus said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. C.S. Lewis said, God whispers to us in our pleasures. He speaks to us in our conscience. But he shouts to us in our pains. It is his megaphone to arouse a deaf world. An old Indian legend tells about a young mother who was distraught over the death of her firstborn child. And so she goes to the chief for some advice and counsel. And he tells her to go to every family in the tribe. Go to every TP there in the family and get a pumpkin seed from every family that has never experienced sorrow or trouble. And it said she came back empty-handed but wiser. May I tell you about Jim? Jim is about 90 years old, but he's still in pretty good, good health. He's, he, he's strong. He's rather robust. He, he's, he's just recently moved into assisted living. He's a tremendous Alabama fan. When you go to see Jim, he has this big Alabama uh, banner on his door. He collected memorabilia of the Crimson Tide for years and years and years. In fact, his daughter just finished her term as the president of the National Alabama Alumni Association. But Jim outlived two wives. He outlived two wives. 
He has the most gracious, gentle, kind, grandfatherly spirit in a man I've ever known. Not only that, not only has he outlived two wives, he has outlived two sons. That should never happen. Life is just not fair in some cases. Two, they were students at the university. One of them died of natural causes and the other one was riding his bicycle across campus and was hit by an automobile. Kind of reminds me of Job. I know that my Redeemer lives and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. I told Jim not too long ago, you know, we can see Jesus in you. In the midst of your troubles, in the midst of your, uh, of your agony, he kept his faith. And his, I never heard him speak a, a, a bitter word toward God or about God. I, we could see, light your, light your world. Lord, help us in the midst of our troubles. Light your world. Let others see Jesus in you in the manner of your living. Folks, somebody's watching. Somebody's looking. Somebody watches us as God's people. John, the gospel writer, tells us in the 12th chapter of his book that some Greeks came to Philip, Philip, one of the Lord's disciples, and said, Sir, we would see Jesus. Sir, can you introduce us to Jesus? Why did they come to Philip? By the way, these, this happened on the last week of Jesus' life, probably on the Monday, his last Monday of his life when he cleansed the temple. But why were, if, if these Greeks were there in, in, in Jerusalem, why were they there? Why were these Gentiles there? If they had come to the temple at all, they could have come to the court of the Gentiles, but that is far as they were allowed to go. These people were always interested in some new philosophy. Or maybe sometimes they became non-Jewish proselytes to the Jewish religion. But they had been watching Philip. Maybe they went to Philip because his name is of Greek origin. Or maybe they had seen Philip walking with, with Jesus along the shores of the Sea of Galilee. It's likely that they were from Bethsaida, the same area from which Philip came. Or they might have been over on the northern side of the Sea of Galilee in the Decapolis, a city of ten, uh, uh, ten Greek cities. But they had watched Philip. What if Philip had made a mistake? What if his life had been inconsistent? John says that they said, uh, sir, we would see Jesus. Can you get us an appointment? And Philip goes to Andrew, and then Andrew comes to Jesus with it. And while we're not really shown that, Exactly what happened, I imagine he did. But light your world in the manner of your living because somebody's watching. There's a gospel according to Matthew, to Mark, and to Luke, and to John too. There's another that many are reading, the gospel according to you. All teaching we find in the Bible are but facts we believe to be true. You must live them to make them the gospel, the gospel according to you. Many read not the words of the Bible. I'll tell you what some of them do. They're reading the book you are writing the gospel according to you. There's power in the minister's preaching. Well, so you say, I believe it is true. But that which will tell most is the gospel according to you. God help you to Christ to be faithful and to live all his teachings so true so that others may be seeing his spirit in the gospel according to you. I'd rather see a sermon than to hear one any day. I'd rather one should walk with me than merely tell the way. For well, the eyes are better people and more willing than the ear. Fine counsel is confusing. An example is always clear. And the best of all the preachers are the men who live their creeds. For to see good put in action is what everybody needs. I soon could learn to do it. If you let me see it done, I can watch your hands in action, but too fast your tongue may run. And the lecture you deliver may be very wise and true. But I'd rather get my lessons by observing what you do. What you do speak so loud, I can't hear what you say. Didn't Emerson say that? Well, light your world in the manner of your living. I was at the doctor's office the other day, and this lady came in, and obviously she was a caregiver with this patient. She wheeled her in in a wheelchair. She was filling out all the information, you know. 
And then all of a sudden she gets up and she walks across the room to where I was sitting. And she comes up and she calls my name. And she puts her hand out. And she told me that years ago, I had baptized somebody that was very, very close to her and family. I don't remember it. I don't know who she was. I just pretended, you know. <laughs> but somebody's always watching. Light your world in the midst of your troubles. Light your world in the manner of your living. And finally, let's light our world in the method of our witness. In the method of our witness. This was verbally, person to person. They came to Philip. Philip went to Andrew. Andrew went to... None of us, none of us lives a life so holy, so pure, so perfect that somebody can just follow our footsteps all the way to heaven. They must know him who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Well, the Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved, but how can they hear without a witness? And how can, how can the witness without being sent? Now, I'm not saying you just go around and you grab somebody by the collar and, you know, you kind of force yourself, hey, brother, are you saved? There are places for that, but a relationship with somebody. Or have you ever told anybody what Christ means to you? Not just a simple invitation to church, but what Christ means to you, or, or have you made the wonderful discovery of a personal relationship with Christ? The method of our witness has to be not only backed up by life, but word for word, verbal. Edward Kimball was a Sunday school teacher. He had a young boy, a 17-year-old in his class named Dwight. And Edward Kimball had a tremendous influence upon Dwight Moody so that the young man trusted his life to Christ. And the Lord called Dwight L. Moody to become quite a preacher, traveling more than one million miles on horseback and preaching to more than 100 million people all before the days of mass transit and mass communication. In one of his Crusades, Dwight L. Moody was preaching. A young man by the name of Mordecai Ham was in the congregation. He heard. He was convicted by the Spirit of the Lord to give his life to Christ, and Mordecai Ham became a believer. Guess what? He was called to preach too. In 1934, in a three-month tent revival in Charlotte, North Carolina, Mordecai Ham was preaching. And behind him in the choir was a tall, lanky young man who gave his life to Christ. And he went home and said, Mama, I'm a different boy now. I'd say he was. William Franklin Billy Graham. From Dwight L. Moody to Mordecai Ham to Billy Graham to us, to this world. And it all began with a simple, faithful Sunday school teacher who made sure that his life was the light of Christ. You builded temples in his name of mortar and brick and stone, of windows of glass most beautifully stained with tower and spire and dome. But what do we give by ways care for structure and line and trim? For out in the dust of the lonely road, we only ask for him. You robed your choirs and trained them well in proper and intricate song. You bought fine organs to edify and lull the weary throng. But what do we care for your black robed choir or your organs deep? Amen. We want you to walk beside us here and point the way to Him. Oh, the roads of the world are crooked maze and we are woefully lost for the path to men and the roads, well, are lost. What do we care for your trappings of art when our heart's high hope is dim? We seek the touch of his healing hand. Won't somebody show us the way to him? You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Let others see Jesus in you because you may be the only Jesus some people will ever see.
Let us pray. Blessed God, we thank you for the Savior, for his sacrifice to us, for us. Thank you that we, by faith, belong to him and to you as a, as a family of God. And so as we come to this time of, of, of renewal, time of, of trust, decision, opportunity, may your spirit give us freedom. If there'd be one here, young or old, who needs to trust you as Savior, one who wants to recommit his life to letting his light shine. We thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen.